Hi, um, you're with Terry from Bonsai Tree again, and today I'm with Brett Simon, who is no stranger to you. I'm sure you've uh, seen one or two videos that he's done with me on junipers, and today we are again going to be doing something quite fun. We're going to be talking about tanuki, and uh, tanuki is um, something that I think we can all do, very underutilized, uh, what do you call it, uh, practice or style? Style, yeah. practice. Okay, so if you've got a dead tree, tree hasn't, uh, hasn't made it, maybe something you've collected, and you've got some um, cheap material which you, can, which you can get from pretty much any nursery or even grow it from a cutting or whatever, um, each of those pieces of material maybe are not substantial on their own right, but if you put them together, maybe you can do some magic. And so Brett is going to be sharing some of his uh, past pieces that he's done. He's got some really nice, uh, really nice tanukis to show you. And then we're also going to briefly go into how you can create this at home as well. So thanks very much, Brett. Take Thank it away. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> I think the exciting part about tanuki is that boundaries of the art, the piece, or what you want to create are endless. There are so many different materials you can use. The exciting part is to take material that is not very great on its own uh, and combining it with something and having the patience to wait for it to grow. This happens to be a piece of olive. Uh, it was a tree that was collected and didn't survive and instead of throwing it away I've, I've cleaned it up a little bit and let it age and then uh, do something to this piece of deadwood to make the deadwood look great and then add something onto it. Something like these little juniper whips will be fantastic. These are grown from cuttings uh, you can use procumbents, which is even easier on something like we have at the back here. But it's just easy material. This is never going to be a great tree on its own. Uh, if I let it grow for another 20 years, maybe. But in five, six years, I could really turn this into something fantastic on there. I think what I'd like to talk about first is the material and what type of material. Uh, varieties are endless, actually. Certain criteria that we need to uh, look at because we can't bend very thick truck trunks on into the shape we need. So younger whips, something like um, this procumbens juniper that uh, we can bend is very, very flexible still. So we can tie it and get it onto the piece of deadwood or rock or whatever we want to use to be able to uh, manipulate the branch to get into where we need it to be. So something that is quite flexible and young, as soon as they start getting older and they're down, um, you know, and they get a lot thicker, we can't bend them as much and it becomes more difficult. The best idea is to let the whips or the whatever you're doing grow long and tall and thin. So let them grow extremely quickly um, and they'll get long and thin and they'll be quite flexible. So that is one uh, procumbents, which is great to use. Um, in the future, if you don't like that uh, particular type of foliage, we can graft onto it, but that's another whole episode. Um, so we can use something like that or we can use the sergeant whips that I showed you earlier. Also nice and pliable and soft. Um, one thing, if you are going to do multiple uh, tanukis up a piece of deadwood, you must use the same variety. So best would be to take cuttings from the same plant, get those long, like I've done here. These are two from the same plant, so that if I use the two, the, the characteristics are the same. You don't want to have one starting to grow, one's dying back on the same tree. You want to be, them to be the same. I also think the type of material that you can use, whether it be evergreen or deciduous, is really up to you. I think um, evergreen is more desirable. Um, and it doesn't just stay to junipers. It can be olives, which also bend very well, young whips. I think deciduous trees could also be used. But again, you've got to use the same species uh, from the same other plant, uh, especially when we're talking about uh, autumn colors and we're talking about the growth coming out and the leaf patterns you want to use the same species. Uh, material for doing your tanuki on is quite important you want to choose a, quite a hardwood if we choose something that was a deciduous tree maybe for example something soft within a few years it's going to rot away no matter what we do to treat it so i think starting off with a hardwood something like maybe an old juniper stump or an olive something that is hard uh, is going to last a lot longer um, especially where that piece of deadwood sits underneath the ground um, and is in contact with that moisture all the time it is going to rot quickly. Something like this which is an old olive it has dried out and is very very dead but is extremely hard. Uh, it's something great we can use and again another olive. So this was a tree that was collected that didn't make it and it's still got all of its bark on and I've left it for about two years out in the elements to sort of 
rot and age and there are many ways of doing it. We can carve to create a better look if you would want to, hand tools or with power tools and then afterwards there's lots of ways of finishing it off. We can let it age for a year or two outside to, to soften those machine marks. Use sandblasting, which I use a lot, to take away a lot of the tool marks, get all the soft material out of that piece of dead wood, and then uh, cure it and, and use different things, epoxies or lime sulfurs or whatever you want to use to harden that wood so that it really lasts. This is my oldest tanuki that I have done. I started this in about 2013. The dead wood was a little piece uh, that I picked up next to a river, picked it up. It had obviously been lying in the river for a long time, but it was extremely hard. So I thought it would probably work quite well. And obviously this was a Sergeant Juniper that I got from the late Rudy Adam. Um, and it was a little whip like the ones I've shown you. And I just decided to stick it on here, not knowing much back then. And, uh, and see where it would take me. So all I did was create a very small channel up the front and I put the young whip in and it uh, came sort of out over here and I just let that grow. And this was done in about 2013 and the first styling was done in about 2017. So I just let it grow freely for a good four years uh, in, in a big pot and it just grew and grew and grew and I did nothing to it. It grew very nicely, it started wrapping around the piece of deadwood and every year it just gets better and better. You know there are some close picks and you can see how the trunk of the live has started to wrap around the deadwood which just makes it more convincing. The great thing about Tanuki is starting off with a very plain piece of deadwood or a nice piece of deadwood or whatever you have and connecting it with a very simple piece of material and there's different stages and patience also plays a role. Um, first we're going to sort out our deadwood, we're going to make sure we have the correct tree that we need and then it's the process of joining the two. Obviously this needs to be done um, when the parent or when the plant, whatever material you choose, is best for repotting because we're going to need to take it out of its bag to get it close to the deadwood so repotting time is the time that you want to do this. Also we are going to put this, the little tree through quite a lot of, of strain so the minimal amount of bending and stuff we will apply and there's different stages that I want to take you through. So this one we will try and do today. This was one that was done last year. This is a piece of juniper that didn't make it and I put a nice procumbens uh, on here and you can see the growth. This barely made it up to the top last year when I put it on and uh, the growth that we've had in this season just in this bucket has been phenomenal. All of this was not here. Uh, I took it away last year so I could help me get it to onto the trunk. So the growth has been fantastic. But all I did was use cable ties to put the trunk in the groove that I created. And the next process now is to now screw that trunk onto the piece of deadwood because it won't just hold it there itself. I decided to use cable ties because it was the, the less aggressive way. Instead of repotting, drilling through the trunk and screwing all at the same time. I decided just to use cable ties to hold it there for a year. Now that those cable ties and the, the, the trunk is set, I'm now going to attach it to the deadwood. So this is the process we need to go through. I decided to use this piece of uh, olive, very hard. Um, it's an old uh, piece of deadwood and I've decided to use this for today's demonstration. What I'm doing now is marking out where I would like the tree that I'm going to attach to this piece of deadwood to be. I think something that's very important is to have a look in nature and see where, for example, a juniper vein will grow. I often see uh, tanuki's been put up the center of the tree and that where it is died up and that is definitely not where a live part of the tree would be. We need to, although we're doing a tanuki, we need to make it look as, as real as possible. So a juniper would normally follow the outside vein. They grow out and die behind. So what I have done is taken this black pen and just marked an area where I think I would like the channel or the groove to go where I'm going to attach the tree. I have done one on this side and for this one I'm going to use two trees. So I've also done one through the back over here so that I get two live lines both on the outside edges, not inside here, although there is a groove here. What I am going to do now is just create a little bit of a hollow so that I can put the branch into and I'm going to use a Dremel tool for that. What 
we are going to do now is obviously prepare our whip for attaching to the tanuki or uh, sorry to the deadwood and what we need to do is we normally want to have one whip that we feed through that channel we've just created so we need to remove all other branches that are getting in the way and here's a typical cutting as you can see it's got a branch that comes off the bottom which is quite a short little one which is not as long as i need i want to use the longest one possible and then we've got another branch coming off here which is going to get in my way so i'm going to remove the bottom one clean with the um the trunk because i don't want it to be in my way and then i'm going to, to remove the other one as well clean with the trunk okay these little ones this one on the inside i can remove and the one on the outside i'll leave for now if it does get in my way i'll remove it it's quite quick to remove but it will help with the thickening process in the future to have a branch growing there so i'll leave it there for now just another important thing is you need to your part of your trunk that is going to be connected it would also need to be clear of branches so these little branches that are in the way we need to remove so that we have one side of the trunk completely open um, so that we can get it in there anything that's growing on the back so now you can see the whole one side of this um, trunk is exposed there's no branches all the way up until we get right to the end i will remove one more and we'll see how we go but i have removed them all the way so when i'm putting it on there's nothing getting in the way we need to do is obviously remove the bag that we've got the juniper in so that we can get the trunk of that as close to the deadwood as possible so what we do is just remove it I'm going to keep it sort of hole at the bottom because I don't need to reduce there and I'm just going to scrape away to expose so that I can get that closest to now the part we want to get closest to is where we have taken away the wood so that part there is the part that's going to be needing to get closest to the trunk or to the piece of dead wood. So I'm just going to remove as much as I need without exposing all the roots because this can take a while. And um, you want those roots to stay moist. So what we need to do is also decide on the angle that we would like our dead wood to be uh, on our finished planting and then try and cut the base flat at the bottom in future this will help to pot into a shallow pot if you wanted to and also give some stability to the the planting so what i'm going to do now is choose my angle which is going to be roughly around there and i've got a flat part sort of at the bottom here so i'm just going to come and cut it off flat at that part there and i'll go and do that and show you what it looks like what i've done is just sawn off the base of the uh, the deadwood so it's nice and flat and now stands on its own which makes it a lot more stable and much more easier to work with. I don't have to try and balance it and obviously for future we can put it in a deep pot, we can now I've got the option to put it in a nice shallow pot. Uh, all we've got to do is manipulate the roots and not worry about a piece of deadwood that was sticking off the bottom. Okay so what we have done is now we've opened up the root ball a little bit so we've got as close to the uh, where we're going to connect the trunk and I've sort of cut away slightly here to get this so I can push it right up against that piece of deadwood. So what we're going to do is start mounting. And we, the first thing we need to do is decide which is the best way that that trunk starts to follow the deadwood. And you can see on that is this. So I've got a bend coming in here so I'm going to follow that bend. If I try to go the other way I'm going to have to push it opposite and it's obviously going to snap. So we're going to try to get in as close as we can. Once we have got it in, we need to start at a point, at a fixing point. The roots are going to fall apart slightly, but we're going to repot the tree now anyway. When we are doing two, like we're doing here, we obviously need to get the cable tie that we're going to start tying to, to both. 
So I am going to place these roughly where they need to be. I'm then going to take a cable tie that I've prepared that is a bit longer than necessary, just so I don't have to play with anything. Get that through underneath somehow. And then I'm going to tie it to both. So I'm going to get this one back to where it is fitting comfortably. And I'm just going to start the tying process. It doesn't need to be perfect on your first run. We'll be able to manipulate and adjust. You can use um, little pieces of hose pipe or plastic oil to protect the trunk. But uh, these junipers seem to heal very quickly. So I'm not going to now. I'm also dealing with two trees. So I've got them roughly in place. And I am going to tie them in as best as I can to each other. And we just tighten. Okay, so now you can see they are sort of in place. You're going to get slight tears. Okay. And that is sort of holding them where they need to be. That's all we're trying to achieve for now. Now we need to get them in. Now you have cleared out a path, but sometimes a branch will get in the way. So all we need to do is just remove it so that we can then get this into that groove. There's another little one at the back here. We're never gonna have branches so low down on this tree, so getting rid of them now is not going to make any difference. This one does keep moving, so what I'd like to do is get another one onto here. Just a little bit higher up. I'm just going to use two long ones again because we've got quite a base to get around. So just join your cable ties as many as you need to get around. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around the front and underneath to give me more leverage. Again, just join them, get it to pre prepare to where you sort of need it, tighten it. I'm going to pull this one down and then hold your tree where you want it. This one is sliding down a bit, so that's why I'm putting another one. You can actually see it almost digging into the branch, but that tree is now secure at the base, and so is this one. Now what we need to do is start feeding them up the tree. So we need to get them into place, and we need to bend them and manip manipulate them into place. So let's get a cable tie ready, so that when we got them into place, we can just tighten. So what I've done here is I've put in a little uh, wedge of, it's quite a hard foam because it's sitting slightly away from the dead wood here. But if I strap over, that point is not going to get into this. I've just put this in here just to help close that gap into it. I'm also holding the other one into the groove, into its place. And now we can slowly start closing. And that's going to happen. Just pull it up. Sure both of them are where you wanted them to be and tighten okay so now we've got that point fitted now we can cut off the excess just so we can see what we're doing but basically those two trunks if I pick this up now are secured by doing those bottom um, ones we can see the trees are now, I'm going to take these bags off, are now prepared. Obviously now we've got exposed roots on both of them. So what I'm going to do is before I plant it, I'm going to just make sure I can carry on strapping these all the way through those grooves I'm done on both sides. 
Once that is done, I'm going to take a tub that I have prepared, like that, that is deep enough to put that in and to plant that and let it grow freely for at least a year. I'm gonna let it grow. I'm not gonna remove the cable ties even if they do start biting in slightly. I'm gonna let them go there and then we're gonna follow the process again of removing the cable ties and screwing the trees onto the trunk in a year's time. I don't do it now. I feel like it's too much stress to repot the tree and to start screwing through the trunk all in one go. So I wait a year and I leave the cable ties on. I think that's just uh, the brief overview of what you need to do uh, in, in doing a tunuki. And the great thing about it is you can take that material that wasn't great and create something that is great in a short amount of time. The tree we showed you in the beginning is uh, five, six years away. And in order for a uh, juniper to grow like that, we're gonna have to grow it for at least 15, 20 years. So the process is a lot quicker. It is really fun. Uh, you can get creative, you can do as many as you want on one piece of deadwood, you can do one. Just have fun enjoying it and I think that's what is important. What we will do is in a year's time we will come back to this tree and uh, see how it has developed and uh, what has happened and then take you through the next steps. So if you want to do one now, do one and in a year's time come back to us and uh, we'll show you what to do in the next steps. Enjoy! I think let's cut.